What's up guys? Welcome back to Back Road Driver. We're the Miser Brothers. Hey, this is build video number six on our 1996 Bronco, the Juice. And we're about to change the back glass out. Most Broncos that have sat outside from this period and, and definitely the ones from before, the seal on the back actually breaks down and it causes a lot of scratches in the glass, which makes it harder to go up and down, which then in turn ruins your back glass motor. So we're gonna change that out today and show you how it works from start to finish, but we're also gonna change out all the rubber seals. So we're gonna have fresh new rubber back there. I think I'm even getting some exhaust coming up through my crappy seals back there. So everything's gonna get freshened up right here. Let's get it flipped around and get it done. So I wanna show you these scratches real quick. Um, truck's dusty, just had a paint job put on it. They're gonna try to wet sand that probably tomorrow. So come in close here. This has extreme scratches in it. I mean, it's like so bad that from the driver's seat with a little bit of light on this, you can see it. And it's worse on this side, but it's scratched up good. Yeah. And if you look down here, you'll see this hard seal, the felt that catches the glass and kind of keeps, you know, everything from going down into the tailgate. So we're going to replace this, the glass and the rubber all the way around. First, we got to get this old glass out and we're going to show you how to do that right now. We've had this rekeyed, and normally you would just roll your glass down to get started in this, but our switch inside of here doesn't work. I don't think we're gonna fix that in this video, but we're gonna get to that soon. So I've gotta go up front where I've got my inside switches. I've already got my ignition on, and I can roll that glass down. Now we're gonna drop the tailgate and we already because of the paint job situation the, the uh, carpet and the panel that blocks from being able to get into anything in the tailgate to work on it is already off i'm going to show you because right now if you go back up and hit the switch the glass won't move there's a sensor somewhere uh but in the switch there's a wire i guess running over to it so what we have to do is trick the tailgate and make it think that it's up and closed so i'm going to actually push this down to where it thinks it's closed. I'm gonna do that on both sides. You gotta click it all the way. You can get it not enough clicks to where it wouldn't think it's all the way closed. It would think it's a jar. And now I can go back up front and roll the window out. You don't have to roll this all the way up. We've still got a couple of inches of what we could do. But we gotta take these two bolts out and be able to get to that wiring harness uh, to be able to unplug it. That's for our defrost rear glass. Some of it will have a defroster, some will not, depending on your Bronco. So a lot of you guys are gonna get in here and look at all this and find out that you've had a motor replaced in the past or this thing's been worked on at some point. And a lot of these clips aren't gonna be connected where they should, so you got wires hanging. You're gonna have electrical tape going everywhere. Um, we noticed on this wire that it is actually broken here so we've got copper exposed which you know if it gets wet is really bad we're going to tape up some of this and clean up some of this while we're in here also give all this a nice wipe down that's just not something you're going to have easy access to on a normal basis so while you're in here you might as well do a little maintenance i've sprayed a little bathroom cleaner on this thing guys like just wiping just a little bit this was nasty it's obviously been wet at some point um, but when you barely put a, just a little bit of elbow grease to it, you're getting a ton of grime off of this. So I'm gonna clean this whole area up while he's taping that up. So Brad's done cleaning this up. Looks a whole lot cleaner back here. Not perfect, but cleaner. So now we're ready to get this glass out of here. You're gonna wanna come in here to your wiring and you're gonna undo these clips. Got that one. Got this one on this side and grab this uh, clip tool these are great uh, if you're gonna do much of this spend a couple bucks and get one it's a whole lot easier than a screwdriver um, but you're gonna pop off all these little clips to get this wiring out of your way and now what you're left with is a couple of nuts that are on here you got two on this side and two over here these are a little trickier to get to but just a uh, you know a shallow wrench will get in there um, gonna get these off in our case they look rusty but they're not super rusted on um, you know 
Some of you guys may run into some that need a little uh, lubrication before you get started. But these are uh, coming off pretty nice. Don't want to drop these down in here. We'll set them in a safe place. All right, so this bracket, as you can see, has studs on it. So you're just going to take those nuts off. And now that you're free, I'm going to take these other two off and uh, we'll try to slide this glass off and see what we're working with. Sam is having to use a small 7 16 wrench to get that last bolt out before he pulls the glass out. Guys, give this video a thumbs up and check out the entire playlist on this build. There'll be 20 videos in it before we're done because we're totally redoing, restoring, resto modding this Bronco. Um, behind us is a, just a gob of parts and that's just video after video that we're gonna throw in this playlist. So when you get done with this one, playlist down in the description and in the end card. Here we go. Bind. Yeah, put the camera down and give me a hand. <laughs> okay. It's fun to pull this out because these catch up on you, but uh, it's not too bad. It'll, it'll come on out. Let's see what we got. We have these brackets that the mechanism is attached to. We've got to remove these to put on the new glass because it doesn't come with them. We've already removed this one. It's pop riveted on. Uh, so you're gonna have to take a drill and drill these out now the hole in the glass as you can see is much bigger than this drill bit so you don't have to worry about hitting the glass and shattering it but you're gonna have to drill these out you don't want to tear up these plastic washers because we are going to reuse those um, so let's get this out of here So I drilled these out with a 1364 bit. You could go just a tad larger if you need to. Just drill them through. You still got the bulge from the pop rivets on the back. So you've got to get that off to get this pulled off of the glass. You can get this side off, just get something. Be careful, you don't want to shatter this glass. It will make a terrible mess. Just want to pop that off. Do the same over here. This side will be much easier. And we're off of there. You still want to work these off. You don't want to break these too bad. You can put it all back together. So once you're stuck with the pop rivet in there, guys, if you've never removed one of these, it's still swelled in there a little bit. It's not gonna push out very easy. You can take your drill and come on this top side. You don't wanna go all the way through because you'll enlarge your hole and make it too big. We're just gonna... I'm just gonna hold it from the back so it don't spin. That'll pop them right off and now you haven't damaged anything on your bracket. Just a little tip, this without the glass in it is gonna wanna move up. So Sam just came up with the idea to throw a little vice grip on here. And if yours is already been repainted here, you probably don't wanna do that. But this will keep this door from slinging up or tailgate from slinging up. Um, to get the felt off this old crunchy stuff, we do have to remove this rubber piece on the corner to be able to get here because there's one screw behind this. And I'm gonna bet when I get this off, it's nasty, the cr got corroded, and there's a piece of metal in it that makes it rigid. I'm gonna bet that that piece of metal is all rusty. And it actually does touch on your glass a little bit. Yeah, this don't feel good. It's not nice and fresh. We don't have these to be able to replace today. We are gonna replace them. Um, this one actually looks like it's in better shape than the other side. It's nasty. But it's got you know rust in here, rust in here, rust in here. The other side split open. I'll show you that. The rubber actually busted open, and this piece of metal was in there, and was already like detached. So that was scratching every time the glass would go up and down. I thought we were hearing mostly this felt on glass, but we might have been hearing this up against the side of the glass too. So it'll be good to get these freshened up. Uh, we'll kind of tape a little bit and get it to where it doesn't rub today. 
uh, but that might be a part you want to order as well. You saw this flop off when we pulled the glass out. It's the inner side, inside felt, and it just popped out while we were pulling glass out. Probably should have taken those two corner pieces off before we pulled the glass out. Um, to get this other side off, screw right here. These are gonna be very corroded. The body panel probably even has rust um, underneath that, like where this screw goes in, because you've had water up against this felt sitting every time it got a little rainy outside for 30 plus years, depending on what age your Bronco is. I mean, I don't wanna use that screw again. We may have to today um, if our new piece didn't come with it. Gotta get both sides out. This is about as technical as I get, this is the manual screwdriver. I don't even get to use the drill around here too often because af Sam's afraid I'll mess something up. Now, this, because ours has been repainted, there may be a little bit of uh, tack from that, but we're gonna pull this out. Be careful if you do have good paint because these, these uh, clips will really booger this thing. So I'm gonna like hold back here while I work this out because I would hate to put a new gash in that paint job. See, that's dangerous right there. No, that is corroded. See, this right here could easily swing into the paint right now. So you gotta be careful. And we're out. That's gross and hard as a rock. All right, we've cleaned all this up, got all the old clips off, and uh, got it ready to put the new trim on. Um, one thing you wanna do, it's got metal in it to help m make it hold a curve or whatever, but during shipping and everything, getting it out of packaging, you might put a little bow or whatever in it. You kinda wanna get it as straight as possible before you get started. You're just gonna feed these clips back into the old holes. And if you got the kit that's got both seals, which most likely you did, this is the bigger piece and it has the screw holes in it to mount up here. It's kind of hard to mess it up. The other piece doesn't have these screw holes in it. Now that we've lined it up, we're just gonna pop it in. We don't want to scratch up our paint. Go ahead and throw this screw back in this corner. And if you do replace this screw, it's gotta be flathead like this. Get it down good and tight. And then same thing on the other side. Same thing on this top piece. We're gonna slide it in. It's gonna be a little tougher because you've got this other in the way now, but you just take your time, line everything up, make sure every one of your clips catches on the way down. This plastic pry tool, um, you can pick these up for a couple bucks about anywhere. It's gonna help you keep these two seals separated as you're working this in. Um, because they are new, they're a little bit problematic. But just take your time and work these in as you go. So this new piece of glass does come with all of the um, heated glass features uh, it's a little bit different than factory but obviously it should work the brackets don't come on this piece of glass like they did on the uh, window glass on the front doors so like you've seen us take these off we're gonna have to get these on here um, rather than going ahead and bolting all this up and then trying to feed it through our new seals which is very tight now it's gonna be a nice fit we're gonna go ahead and slide this glass in and put these brackets on while it's inserted into the tailgate. It's gonna make everything a little bit easier. We're gonna have to go way up high. Your glass ain't in that groove, is it? Mm -hmm. This too, hold on. Man. Yeah. Whoa, stop, stop. If you don't have heated glass, it's going to be way simpler, but where you've got those weld-on connections um, for the heating elements to 
getting them through this brand new um, seals is very problematic um, it took me and Brad and two of these uh, plastic tools working that trim and trying to make sure we don't get it caught on anything having to tilt it but not too far you've got to make sure you're feeding in to the track and you don't want to get under that track with it kicked up and then drop the glass down and it pop on you um, you know so this is the most critical step take your time don't get in a hurry you're going to need somebody else to do this especially if you've got this heated glass putting the brackets back on we got that side on we went ahead and did the hard one we're going to show you what's going on on this side because it's easier to film you're going to take your bracket feed it back on to this slider throw these factory nuts back on you want to uh, make sure this is straight right here there's quite a bit of slop in this so make sure this brackets going on nice and straight tighten these up don't get too crazy but nice and snug I'm sure there's no torque spec to be found on these but I would say snug is good all right now we got this bracket on we can line it up with the holes in our glass you can see our glass here with these holes just gonna line those up we've got our plastic uh, washer system here we're gonna be able to reuse this somewhat and uh, instead of putting the pop rivets back in um, we've decided to go with some bolts and nuts uh, couldn't find the correct size pop rivet locally uh, it's probably gonna be harder for some of you guys to just find that exact right size that fits this but it's easier to find a nut and screw the screws we're gonna use to fix this this could save you some time this is uh, was bought at Home Depot they're by Everbuilt uh, they're around everywhere this is quarter dash 20 threads three quarter inches long came with nuts five in a pack so you've got an extra um, that's a simple fix for this one thing to note is on these washers this end that has the flares on it they're never going to press back into this metal um, so you're going to have to break a couple of these tabs off to make this fit down in there properly um, that was for an original installation purposes I'm sure it was to make it pop on there and hold pretty fast um, but since we're bolting these on and we're not on an assembly line we're gonna break these off so we're ready to put these washers back in now um, remember you've got one that goes between the glass on each side the one on the back has the metal facing out um, we'll feed that screw through we'll take our nut this is the tricky part you gotta go for feel get it to where it's touching and uh, you can start to get it tight yeah don't want to over tighten it till you get the other side on as well this one will be a little trickier with the uh, arms in the way here the other side's the hardest one though as you can see feed the screw through and now this is going to be fun probably drop it a time or two before we get it right just enough play to get it in there putting some flex on the glass so it's kind of scary um, you can notice on this one here we actually flipped it around and put the nut side up instead of uh, on the bottom and uh, that's because it's such a pain in the butt to do it this way after you've got both sides bolted in you're gonna pop on your electrical connections and then because our clips are so old this one popped in but barely this one's non-existent um, and then there's one missing here we've twist tied here we've ran a twist tie through a hole there and this one won't move now it can't move so we just got that a little bit more secured but you do want to make sure all your wire has room to be able to move like it was supposed to from the factory um, it's not a great design guys this right here is a weak spot in this particular replacement glass this is going to get i guess moved back and forth probably 20 times and it's probably going to fall off i don't care that much about the heated glass it stinks 
that this was designed so poorly, but we're gonna have to find a fix for that eventually. So we were having trouble getting this glass to go all the way up into the channel and all the way down past the felt. We didn't feel good about that. We wanted to get it right. So we went ahead and replaced these corner rubber pieces. Um, this is supposed to be hard and it's really not hard on these. The replacements are butter tight. It's just one screw right here and it pops right in. So we did that on both sides. These had split, had rust coming out of them everywhere. And these are actually guides that push the glass back away from the cab to make it fit up in that channel. So they do line up better with this new rubber. And we're, our plans are just to change almost all the rubber on this thing we can. But that still didn't make this glass roll all the way up and all the way down. So we're kind of miffed a little bit. So Sam rolled the window all the way out. And then as I hit the button, he pulled on it and he heard a crunch and it actually like broke something loose. Now it could have been a piece of rust that we jostled loose when we were pulling that old glass out. It could have been this wiring right here that I had pulled a twist tie on too tight and now we've got it loose. This is your, your heater light, lighting, or this is your heater wiring and I've got it to where it can actually flex to go up and down. And I had pulled that really tight and so it may have been that like breaking loose. But now the glass will go all the way up, all the way down. Doesn't feel like it's in a bind. So if it's not going right for you, roll it all the way out pull a little bit while somebody's rolling it and kind of see what the obstruction may be but it's either rust or it's that I don't see any rust but that's kind of what we figured out but we do have the glass in now we're going to show you how that works uh, we've cleaned up some additional stuff we bought these little nylon bushings for the tailgate catches as well ours were up gone and there was just duct tape around there to keep when you know metal closed on metal it sounded horrible and it wouldn't really seal so we've got these we've put one on we're going to show you putting the second one on Let's look at how this glass operates. All the way up. You can speed it up. All the way down. It was stopping short of this before it's stopping about right here. It wouldn't quite get all the way up in here. I guess it was stopping about right here. But yep, yep. We're gonna throw this new upper seal in here in a second. First, I'm gonna throw this other um, bushing in. As you can see, this one just has some electrical tape. Uh, around it and it's pretty nasty and that's to keep this from having so much slop in it we've replaced this one over on the other side and it's butter now now when when you add these on and you've had electrical tape on there uh, you're gonna have to readjust these a little bit because there's gonna be a whole lot less play once this goes on and so the door is not going to shut as good. So um, let's go ahead and pop this off. I'm using a T50, T50 Torx. And um, it's going to feel like it's going to fall down into the door, but it doesn't, trust me. It will stay right there to where you can get to it. But what are, it's, it's got some play in it so that you can move this around when you tighten it up. So once you get it apart, this will kind of screw off. Uh, you clean up whatever's on here. If you got a broken one or whatever, go ahead and get it off. Just gonna slide this back on. And uh, actually, this went this way, I believe. Go ahead, thread it back up. You're ready to put it back in here. So now that we've got to where it's almost snug, I'm gonna back it off just a fuzz so I can move it around now when we had this uh, closed this door needed to come in a little bit more so I'm gonna cheat it back a little bit from where this washer was and you'll be able to see it in the paint so now when I tighten this up Want to get this good and tight. It is taking the whole force of this tailgate. 
but I've cheated it back a little bit. Maybe I need to cheat it a little bit more, but you can play with this to where you get it fitting properly for you. It's not too bad. Might even come out just a fuzz. Yep, that sunk a little. This is pretty perfect right here. So you can adjust these as needed. This uh, didn't line up as good before. Now yeah. it does. Yep. This could come out just a hair. Just a ha hair now. So now it's time to replace this upper seal. And the reason I've waited till now is now that we've got the glass in, we've tested everything, we know that we had proper fitment and it would go all the way up and slide in with the old gasket in there. So now we're gonna be able to pull it out and we know if we have issues, it did work. We've just got to work on the way we mount this new uh, gasket in here. So, or window seal actually. Um, but um, it does have a pin or a, a catch that pushes in here on the sides. So I'm gonna start up here at the top and kind of work this down. That's clean, that's so clean. Yeah, it's the cleanest thing on this truck. So there's a catch there, seems like, and then there's another one here. And that one just pulled out. We'll have to get it out of there. Yep, it's in there. Yeah. Probably be able to reuse these because I think our seal only came with two of these, not four. So yeah, this one's kind of stuck in there too. We'll get pliers on the other side but uh, anyway got these out we we'll clean this up a little bit while we've got these out and throw them in since we've got these as guides we'll start on one side or the other uh, if you're trying to remember which way this is it's kind of a slant to this kind of look at the bottom here and you should be able to tell which way these slant see how that would kind of match that area but uh, we'll go ahead and Push that pin in. Push that pin in. It's going in pretty nice. Now there is a piece of uh, uh, metal up in here, and I think further you push this front lip in it's going to catch on that just a little bit almost home grab two more oh yeah perfect fit let's see if she'll roll up now we did have to work this out a little bit. I didn't go, Sam. So, oh, there it is. Yep, it's in there. So we had to pull the gasket back out and then let it back in. And now it feeds up in there. What we're gonna do is leave this glass up, go put it out in the sun and let everything kind of set in there. But the glass wants to hit on the inside of this rubber. And so, it has to get conformed to where that'll hit and then slide up into the actual track there. I think we got the glass in, got the cells in. If you want to see more videos of everything we've done to this Bronco, and if you're watching in the future, everything we're doing to this Bronco, we'll put that playlist right here over Sam's face. You might want to go back, watch the very beginning. <laughs> Guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.